Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome back. If you haven't been here before, welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you some really inexpensive storage. The biggest problem I find with beads is what do you do with them? These are wonderful. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. What if you don't have a Dollar Tree near you? What if you don't have any type of things or you don't have the extra dollar for your supplies just to store them? Maybe you just you know, spend all your money on clay. I get that. I've been there. I also get these at the Dollar Tree. These are wonderful. But if you can't find these or you don't have a Dollar Tree near you or you just can't get them, there are some alternatives. And I have some alternatives that are free or really inexpensive. I'm going for as inexpensive as possible. This is made, believe it or not, with a Pringles can. And this is one of my favorite ones, and it's made for practically free out of my recycling bin. It's just made with used lids. You can use any size lids, it doesn't matter. I'll show you how to pull this apart more on my close-up camera, but I wanted to show it to you when I was holding it so you could get a better idea of how it works. The now this one is one of my favorite ones. I have the Dollar Tree box, which it works okay. But actually, I like this one much better. I actually switched the rest of them over to these boxes because this is simply just lids. You can use any type of lids of any product that you use multiple times over and over again. But what I like about it is these little beads that are flat or pearls or anything like this. I can see which ones, whoops, that's an empty one. I can see number one, which ones I have in here. On the side, they're kind of clear. And I can see how they're different shapes. You'll find some are a little bigger than others. I do that intentionally. I could measure these out perfectly. I like the way they look in my pieces when they're more natural like that. But when I'm working with them, I can see which ones match more better and have a better type of a look. Or if I'm looking to graduate them, it's just easier to work out of these little kind of trays. And you can see how easy they are to just pull up and out. So here, let me lay these out and show you how many I have just in this little container. And, oh, that one's empty. So I have two more trays in there. And then I have the bottom. I would not put anything in this bottom tray. I think it's just better to let it hold it together. And what is this made out of? Just a Pringles can. That's it. I've used the lids, that's all there is. Now if you don't have Pringles, you don't eat Pringles, you don't know anyone that eats Pringles, that you can use any type of a lid or any type of a piece of cardboard as the cylinder to hold it together. I've just decorated this with some scrapbook scraps that I've had left over, a book page and some an old card that you've had, anything if you want to decorate it or you can leave it looking like a Pringles can, doesn't matter. I'm just really funny. I like everything decorated real pretty because this is where I live and I like everything to look nice. So all you do is basically put them back in and stack them. And I found my cat has knocked this over and it didn't even fall apart. Although the other box, this box my cat did knock over and the lid does snap off of it. So I was pretty surprised at that. I thought it would be the other way around. I thought this would tumble and go everywhere and it didn't. It actually stayed together. And all you're doing is stacking up your little lids inside. And then I just put one on top as the actual lid. And I have several of these. Moved a lot of my stuff to these. And I've just, whenever we have an extra can, I just throw the extra lid on there. So I keep it up about this high. I wouldn't go any higher. I like that little half inch lip at the top there. It just makes sure that nothing comes apart. And how do you create this? This is so easy. All I did was just taking a razor. Well, I'll cut a little further than the bottom. Now this does not need to be exact, so don't beat yourself up. So I cut one side and then I'll cut this side. I like to cut it right on each side of this line here. You've got your exact calorie thing. All I do is I'm just taking 
a straight edge, any type of straight edge, we'll do this and making a line on each side. That's for two. If you're going to make just one, you only need half of this. And that just gives me a nice straight line to cut. Okay, now I have it opened up. And I've got a few little potato chip crumbs here, but that's okay. And this part, we're not going to use at all. So that part you can dispose of. And now it's just a matter of how high do you want this? Do you have like only five of these? Do you make, or do you have 10 of these? Whatever it is, you're basically just using a cylinder and holding it into it. So you can make this any height you want. I made mine three inches, about three inches down. And this is when I like to straighten it out because this stays in this curve so it's not a big deal. So you can now straighten this edge out and go down three inches. And just cut that edge. I'm just going to cut that right off. And you can trim this edge up. And I'm just going to take a baby wipe and clean this all off. I don't want it to be greasy. Now I'm just going to take scotch tape and tape this tray side up. So it's like a little tray. You can have it the other way. So if you wanted it to be like feet going down either side, does not really matter. I like the way the tray side sits when it goes up. And you're just going to tape this onto here all the way around. I just do a few pieces to get it started and then just tape it the rest of the way. I didn't even glue it. My beads are not really heavy so I don't have much worry. If I had heavier beads I would probably hot glue along the seam here to reinforce it but since they're not heavy I don't feel that there's a need and I've been using this for probably six months now and I haven't had any issues with it. Just make sure that the edge at the corner here is well down. And that's all there is to it. Now I can show you with the other ones. You just slide them in. And they sit perfectly on top of each other. So any type of a lid, sometimes you get yogurt with lids like this. As long as they're all the same size, you can do this and just make any type of a cylinder with some cardboard. Now all, the only difference I did with this one was I just decorated it. This one is just your standard Pringles and this one is just decorated. But other than that, they're basically just the same exact thing. So it's trash to treasure because these work perfect as a storage for just those little crystals, rhinestones, beads, and just put one on top and it acts like a perfect little seal. So you don't have to worry about it. They're all in there nice and tight. It can turn over, it can turn sideways, it's fine. And you can just, as you get lids, add them to it. My other favorite is Ziploc bags. Now I am a real cheapskate frugal crafter that if there's little bags that come with my husband something he buys and it's got a few extra screws in it or anything or even when I purchase my beads they come in these little bags I save every one of these little bags and reuse them till they fall apart and you probably say get over it they're not that expensive it's not about the price it's about the landfills I don't want to keep filling landfills with plastic plastic and plastic I'm worried about my future great-grandchildren they don't want to live in that environment so anything that we can save is precious you just take a little box I made this one I actually just cut the lid off of I had gotten something shipped to me and it had this little box inside and I was like oh, that's perfect for my cup chains. So this is already set and ready to go. Now, usually I decorate these boxes, but for you guys, I didn't want to decorate them before because I felt like it was one of the things that I wanted you to see. You don't need to decorate them. I do it because I'm obsessive compulsive. 
but if you don't decorate them, they're still just as useful. They're just fine, and they hold everything perfectly and neat. So you don't have to go out and buy the Ziploc bags if you have them. Put all your buy cones in a little box. Put all your leftover little seed beads that you only have a few left. You just put them in a Ziploc bag in a little box and keep them separated, and it's a perfect way to keep it all neat. But I used to put a little piece of paper and mark what size they were, whether they were two, three, or four millimeter, because I could never tell them apart when I first started. So when you're wondering what size was it that you had and what size to reorder, it's easier to keep a little tab in there if you don't remember what size you had. But I just keep the size in it so that when I put it in a video, you guys know what size I'm using. The other one that is my ultimate favorite is egg cartons. And I know you're gonna say, well, great. I can fit this stuff in the bottom here, and now I've got this big, bulky carton. Wrong. We're going to cut this up and use the trays, and you will be amazed. You can probably make put 10 of these trays into a box and keep tons of beads, and this is free. Anything free is fabulous. I love free things. I love creating with whatever's left over in the trash because let's face it, it only ends up in a landfill. If we can save it, why buy more of these and have these reproduced when we've got all of these already? Now with my egg carton, these cartons come in a threefold kind of thing where the other cartons come in where you just have the bottom that the eggs fit in and it has the lid. The clear ones have two pieces. You can use actually both pieces. The lid we wouldn't use anyway. So I just separate the pieces. And I find that this one sits perfectly inside of that one. Some of them do, some of them don't. You have to check them. They're all a little bit different. Now, the top one is fine. You can see there's, it's just perfect little cups. You don't have to do much. You can just take a piece of cardboard or any type of cardstock, piece of paper, and it's the better way to do the tabs because you can see what I'm doing here. You just take a little piece of scotch tape and you tape it down to one side and then make sure you have enough scotch to go down on the other side. But any type of cardstock, anything that grabs, and I put one on each end, so I'm just adding a piece of scotch tape and make sure you have it just at the edge here. It's hard to see because this is clear. I wish I did have a foam one and you could see better, a foam or a paper one, but that makes you a perfect tray. Now for the other one, I want you to see closer underneath if I get my fingers in here, there's these little wells that kind of go in between. So your beads would, see how that bead got caught in the middle there? We have to tape those spots up. And showing you the scotch tape, you're not going to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use a little bit of washi tape because it's the only thing I can think of that you'll be able to see how I do this. You're just gonna cover up those spots that bleed through. And once you've done this with scotch tape, you can't even see it and it just holds it in so that your beads won't go from section to section. So you're just taping that up where it bleeds in. Now it doesn't do it on this one, it does it on this one, and it does it on the sides here. So I'm just taping those together, just scotch tape, and it'll keep the beads from sliding over from section to section. And that's all you really need to do, and then add your tabs. Now I've built my box, just an old cardboard box as I get eggs for my family gets eggs, I can just take these and save them and then I have all these trays to work with. And so you have the tabs on the sides and it keeps it nice and sturdy and you can grab them and pull them out and you have all your beads just in your trays here. And 
and that costs just the price of a few pieces of scotch tape and yet it's so usable. I can use this for years and years and lay out and eventually I'll have just ones that are certain colors in each tray as I create them if I don't end up using them as quick as I create them. Sometimes that happens too, but you can put all your flower beads, your leaf beads, all of those together. Most of the time it's what do you do with the polymer clay beads you make and you know it's so expensive to keep buying all these little sectioned out trays. When we're throwing these away it's almost silly. Now to cover my box, I've already covered part of it. It makes it stronger besides looking better and I've just got some old book pages. You can see how yellow these are. These are really old. They're actually so old that they kind of fall apart almost as I tear them. And I've just got some Elmer's school glue. You can use any kind of white glue. And I just take a little cup of course from my recycle bin and I mix some water into it. About a third water and two thirds glue. And I'm just basically doing parts of the box in sections because it has to dry otherwise I don't have any way to lean it. And I'm just, oops, I just put parts of it in different directions and layer it up. And this not only makes it stronger and look nicer, but it makes a much sturdier box so that if you fill this with a lot of beads, it'll hold them and you don't have to worry about it falling apart on you because if you did get like 10 trays of beads in here, it could get rather heavy. So reinforcing it, this is an inexpensive way to do it. It actually looks really nice. I like the way the paper looks. It's kind of got a vintage look and I usually like to take some scrapbook paper or any type of, any type of ribbon scraps and or even old fabric scraps and make flowers out of them. I like to decorate the things in my studio, but I like to use toss away things to do it. I'm the first one at a party that's there grabbing all the ribbons that everybody's going to throw in the garbage from packages because to me they're little treasures and I just can't see them go in the garbage. So I'm going to just continue wrap, uh, covering this box and I'll come back when I'm done and show you what it looks like. Here's a day later and it's all dry and I've decorated it with just some leftover doily and this is an old blouse that I made a flower out of. I have a separate tutorial, I'll link it below when I cover a box with fabric because you could also use an old blouse to cover this. My feeling is just because we use junk to make our organization doesn't mean our studio has to look like junk. You can make everything all matchy and make it pretty. You could cover this with wrapping paper, any type of paper. I just use books. I like the way the vintage pages look. So if I decide in five years from now that I don't want to do beading anymore and I'm running out of beads and I stop making beads, I don't feel guilty throwing this away because this was in the trash anyway. So it's not a big deal. I'll pop off my little flower because I popped that off of all my pieces and it's not a big waste. These guys are a big waste. I don't mind buying them once in a while, but I reuse them. I give them away. I never throw these away, but this is also money. So it's all in perspective of if I bought five of these, that's five dollars worth of clay I could have bought where this was free. I also covered my little box with my little rhinestone chain and I've realized that it doesn't all fit in this box. I just got a big order of them. And once again, if I decide that I don't want to use this box anymore, I don't feel guilty throwing it away. It just has a couple of flowers that I made out of an old greeting card. And of course our Pringles can. We all knew this was going in the garbage. We've all been guilty of throwing these away. So anytime we can recycle and reuse, it's so worth it besides the fact if it's a temporary thing, like say you're only going to be beading for a few years or you want to see if this is really your hobby, this is a great way to find some extra storage and you don't have to invest in much. Plus, every time we don't buy more stuff, we save Mother Earth. I hope I gave you some easy ideas for storage and please don't feel intimidated if you don't have a dedicated studio space like I do. I did not always have this space. I used to craft in my bedroom. I had one little corner with a shelf that just had supplies on it and I organized them with what I had. This is how I've always been organizing them and decorating my boxes to try to make it blend in with my bedroom so it didn't look like it was an eyesore and it worked out just fine. So don't feel like if you don't have a large space or a dedicated space you can't craft. As long as you have a TV tray and a corner you can craft and have a fun day. Thank you.